Hey guys, so in the last lesson we went over how to work with design options and put them on sheets. In this lesson I want to talk to you about how to use design options with schedules. So in the previous tutorial we wound up creating level 1 option 1 and level 2 option 2. And remember, the appearance of these different plans is controlled from the Visibility Graphics settings and the Design Options tab. And you can at any point change these visibility settings if you want to show a third or a fourth option, and so on. But for now, I want to talk about how schedules can come into play, and how design options and schedules can work together to give you enhanced functionality. So I'm on the Level 1 Option 1 floor plan, and I'm going to open up Smaller Version Option 1 from the Design Options menu. Remember, this is the smaller of the two additions that we created. I'll then select Room from the Architecture tab, and I'll make it a room. Now for our purposes, we're going to click on the Room tag, and we're actually going to change it to Room Tag with Area. So we can actually see the area of the room in square meters. Specifically, it's 27 square meters. Now we're using the sample model that comes with the program, which defaults to metric, but remember you can always change that by going up to the Manage tab, selecting Project Units, and then changing the relevant unit. In this case, we would change Area, and we'll change it to Square Feet, since I'm working more in the Imperial system. Now obviously you can keep this just as it is, but I want to show you the difference between looking at this under Option 1, and then under Option 2. So, hmm, bear with me for a second here. Okay, I think what I need to do is go back into the floor plan for level 1, option 2, and I'll set my extension there as a room. But remember, you don't want to create that room under your main model design option. You'll need to set it to option 2, because again, this particular view is designated for option 2. Now if you find that you make a mistake and do in fact create that room under the main model, that isn't a big problem. You can fix that by selecting your room and going up to the Manage tab, select Add to Set, and then you can add it to the correct option. So in this case, I'll add it to my Option 2 set. Once I've done that, then I can go back into my main model and delete it from there. So we go into Main Model, we delete it, and then if we go back into option 2, we can see the room tag. And so now for our option 2, we're just going to click on the room tag, which you can see right there, click under the properties, and change it to room tag with area. So we can see that we have 519 square feet in option 2, and if we go back to option 1, we can see that's 287 square feet. I'm also going to change the room name. The first one will be Expansion, Option 1. So we've got that, and you can see it labeled. And now I will go back into Level 1, Option 2, and change the name of that room to Expansion, Option 2. Alright, and even though the color didn't change, that's fine. One important consideration at this juncture is to be careful not to have created a room under your main model that overlaps with your options. You want to make sure that your expansion is actually designed on the correct option. So I'm actually going to go through and delete the room tag here so I can make sure that I did it right. So I know I'm on option 2 now. I'll go ahead and create a room and then I will change the name of it again to expansion option 2. And we'll also have the tag show area. Alright, now when it comes to the schedules, if you scroll down the project browser there should be room schedules. Well, I don't see one already made, so we'll have to create one. Now there's two different ways you can do that. You can either right click on your schedules right down in the project browser and select new schedule quantities, or if you're more familiar with the ribbon, you can go up to the view tab and select schedules and then schedule quantities from the drop menu. So in this case, I'm going to choose our rooms to create the room schedule, and when you press OK, this time we're only going to include a name and an area. All the other information, as we've discussed when we've covered schedules before, 
You can add in if you need, but it's not really relevant for our example here. So if you wanted to, you could add a level, uh, you could add a number, your mark, but again, those are up to you and your needs. So we'll press OK, but you'll notice that nothing shows up. Now, there could be several reasons for this. Um, it could be because of the phase that you're under, it could be because of your view settings. So let me check my phase. I'm going to go back for a moment to see what phase we were actually in. This would be a very good time to mention again the complexities behind phasing. You should know about it from the intermediate course, but if you need a refresher, go ahead and watch those videos again, because it is complex. Alright, so when we built this, we were under the working drawings phase, and our actual options were built also under the working drawings phase. So make sure that the phase you create your schedules on is also in play. As you see here, when we change the phase for our schedule, all the information appears. Phasing is an extremely important component that affects pretty much every part of Revit, so pay attention to it. Now I'm going to delete this row since that was part of a previous room, but now you can see option 2. So what I'm going to do now is rename this schedule, and I'm going to call it Room Schedule Option 2. And remember, another thing you can do is edit which options you actually see in the schedule. If you go up to your visibility graphics overrides, you'll see it set to automatic, which defaults to the primary. I'm going to set this to option 2 though. So now that we've got that done, if we go back to our sheet, I can actually draw the room schedule right over here. So now that we've got that in there, I'm actually going to double click into the schedule go to the Sorting and Grouping tab, and actually add in grand totals, so I can see total counts. And I'm going to want my grand totals to be for area, so I'll sort by area under the Sorting Grouping tab. And now I'll hit OK. Oh, actually no, I'm not done yet, so I'll go back into my edit. Uh, yeah, Sorting and Grouping looks good. And now I will go under Formatting, and I'll make sure Area is set to Calculate Totals. And now in our Room Schedule, you can see the grand total of rooms and of their area, which in this case is 3,590 square feet. Now this is for Option 2, so if I take this schedule and duplicate it, and I'll rename it, remember you can either double-click into the name, or you can right-click on the schedule from the Project Browser and select the Rename option, and here I'm going to call it Option 1. Now that we've changed the name, we'll go back to the Visibility Graphics Overrides for the entire schedule. We'll change it to Option 1, and now you can see 3,357 square feet is the grand total. And obviously that's because our expansion Option 1 is considerably smaller. So now I can go back to the sheet that I had my options on, throw Option 1 onto that sheet, and now you can really see, side by side, what the differences are between our two options. So this is a really helpful way to lay out all of the data pertaining to different design options in a way that you can assess them right away. And it can also apply to other categories, such as costs, it could come in handy when you're laying out furniture, any sorts of different fabrics, and you can even do a cost analysis with this program. So schedules can help you organize and see the data on your projects, but design options can give you alternatives. And when you combine the two, you can see objective data on your different options right away. You can see the figures, say, on designing 10 team rooms versus designing 5 team rooms and a large conference room. Or maybe instead of the one large conference room, you want to design two smaller conference rooms. So you can present these different possibilities to clients, because design options don't impact your original design. It simply gives you alternatives. Alright, that's it for design options. You can continue on to the next lesson.